Hi, I'm Empty Virus, also known as Jojo or Moonlight Terror in the EU server. And uh, today I'm going to teach you how to install the DirectX 9 to DirectX 12 wrapper, the DX912PXY, or as it's more commonly known, the DirectX 12 mod for Blade and Soul. So, right now you should see some uh, timestamps on your screen, uh, and you should follow those depending on what you want to see. Uh, there's the safe version of the mod, the bleeding edge version of the mod, and then we have the results or what the game should look like when first running it. Okay, so to install the safe release, you're going to go to the GitHub page, to which I will have a link in the description, and you're going to click releases. From there, you're going to scroll down until you find an assets portion of the post. In this assets portion, there should be source code and there should be a zip file. You're going to click the zip file. It's going to start unloading and once that's done, you're going to open it. You're also going to open the Blade and Soul folder. This folder is under C, Program Files x86, and CSoft BNS. Once you're here, you're going to open the bin64 folder. You're going to drag and drop the D912PXY folder in there. Can you close the zip file now? Once that's done, you're going to open the D912PXY folder. And you're going to rename BNS underscore config to just config. After that's done, you're going to open the DLL folder, the release folder, and you're going to copy d3d9.dll. Once that's done, you're going to go back to the bin64 folder, and you're going to paste it there. Uh, if you want to see the game in action, I'll put the timestamp on the video and just jump there. Okay, so now for the Bleeding Edge version of D912PXY. And if you don't know what Bleeding Edge is, just Google Bleeding Edge technology. Um, and you're going to scroll down and click the AppVayer link. There will also be the AppVayer link in the description. If you want to jump straight through there. And you're going to make sure that the current build is green and it's in the master branch. If it's either not green or not in the master branch, you can always go to history and search for one that is. The higher up they're on the list, the newer they are. So luckily, our f one on the top is both green and is on the master branch. So we're going to open it. We're going to go to Artifacts, and we're going to click the link to download the Bleeding Edge build. Once that's done downloading, the process is pretty much the same as uh, the regular release installation. So you're going to open the zip file, and you're going to open the BNS folder which is under C, Program Files x86, and CSoft BNS. From there, you're going to open the bin64 folder, and you're going to drag and drop the D912PXY folder in there. Now we can close the zip, and once that's done, you're going to open the D912PXY folder, and you're going to rename BNS underscore config, to just config. Once that's done, you're going to go to the DLL folder, release folder, and you're going to copy d3d9.dll. Now we're going to go back to the bin64 folder, and we're going to paste the DLL we just copied. Okay. 
and once that's done you're ready to start the game now I'll jump to the game and we'll see uh, how does it look how, what happens just to make sure that everyone is on par and that nothing went wrong Okay, so first I'm just going through my characters. Everything seems fine. Everything's loaded. Uh, now for the, this particular release, Mission Tower is already loaded, so we don't have to load the map. We just have to load the players. But again, that barely affects performance. Everything looks fine. So I'm going to do a little bit of Otlo Island because there's nothing loaded in here. But as you can see, even though nothing's loaded and things are popping in, it does not affect performance at all, unlike profiling mode in previous versions. Um, if we we can go straight ahead and immediately start doing the bosses while things are loading in the background. Uh, if things are unloaded by the time you leave, the it will just restart loading the rest of the things uh, next time you come in. Things that are already loaded are there forever and you won't have to load them again. Uh, here we're coming to a bit of a tricky part, because even though it's better optimized and all that stuff, there are still a lot of people in the stands, and ev as you can see even as I'm exiting, some people are still popping in, and that's that takes a big hit on performance. Now coming to Yoharan, you can see that the map around me is not loaded, but uh, I can still perform the fight, like if it was loaded. Next, I'm going to Wijaya Monastery, it's a pretty different area, so loads of assets to load. We get here, as you can see, most of the things are not um, loaded, including the players. I have Control F1, so that won't affect much, but I, I make the decision to wait for the things to load. Uh, I didn't have to, I just thought, why not? Uh, as you can see here, most of the things are not loaded. But as we go through, uh, they will load pretty fast. Uh, it's small areas. Uh, so the overall performance you should expect from this mod is just like regular balloon soul, but you should not have stutters. It should be way more smooth. Uh, the currently known issues with this mod, the, as far as I know, there's two. There's one where if you have shadow distance to more than one, uh, areas will look darker. And then there's one when there's too many things on screen, like when you're in motion for one with characters on, uh, there will be uh, artifacts on screen. So uh, here on the first run, I had a freeze, pre-sent BNS stuff, um, while loading new attacks. That's the, from the game itself. I can not blame it on DirectX 12. Um, Okay, so I leave and I go to F12 because uh, I actually wanted to show you guys. Uh, the game will usually prioritize loading the, the area before it loads the boss. So uh, it's actually beneficial to come to F12 and load each boss. You don't have to do this, especially in dungeons where uh, there are multiple bosses. So you still have to walk a bit to get to uh, uh, subsequent bosses. Uh, the first one may take a bit to load, but the second one general rule stays there so uh, here i was just playing a bit with uh, last boss wc as i was waiting for him to load see now that the background area is loaded load uh, bosses load pretty fast and they stay in memory so when you start a dungeon you won't have to load them like this again uh, also i can't stress this enough you only have to do all this loading once so uh, unless they release new areas you won't have to do this uh, so here Rukesh took a while because it had to load the whole foundry in the background and uh, then I just killed full barriers. first because it has 1 HP good job NCSoft and second I thought that would be enough for the demonstration uh, and if you want to help with the development of the tool you can join the uh, GW2 development community discord that's going to be in the description also and even though it's for Guild Wars 2, that's where Mega is working on D912 PXY. So feel free to stop by, maybe report a bug, uh, ask something. Or you can even come in and scream at us uh, because you have the IQ of an average Blade and Soul Redditor. 
and you weren't able to follow simple instructions and end up fucking your installation anyways. Alright, see ya!